All of you would receive a missive, once again calling you up to the office of Agel Hestrom. Uh, the two of you had noticed that Agel had not actually been present for the training yesterday, uh, probably involved in something pertaining towards the Pathfinder Society, and therefore uh, would be somewhat surprised to receive said missive calling you up to his office to speak with him directly. You would make your way in, finding his office much as you'd seen it before, the sort of trophies lining the wall and Adriel sitting behind his desk. He would look somewhat more, well, concerned and less burdened by the sheer amount of work in front of him than he was previously, more focused on a single task at hand, and would nod towards all of you and motion you forward to enter. He would stand up to his feet once you uh, entered the room, being a towering figure, although not actually as tall as you and would stand in front of the window, glancing out. He called us? Yes. A matter of some import has come to the society's attention. We have a task for him. Okay. We've already assigned another group of Pathfinders to deal with a similarly related task. But we will need your services to leave the city of Absalom and make your way over the land to our sister city of Dyebell. The situation has arisen. There is a man by the name of Darciel Dumois. He is a pirate, if you will. A somewhat infamous figure. Captain of the Hydra's Fang. A chillish ship. I make a face at the mention of chillis. The man in question is a third son of a baron of the Chalaxian Empire. He has protection, or had protection. He has been working as a privateer for some time until he is, well, tells of his ruthlessness and infamy spread. Sounds more like a pirate than a privateer. Yes. So are we to deal with him? Yes. From what I understand, he has lost the favor of House Thorne. They have chosen to distance themselves, and he is no longer recognized as a privateer for the Chalaxian Empire, but is in fact a private pirate in totality. He has been raiding along the coast and has attacked the nation of Andrew. During this attack, he has killed a wizard, as well as many other people in the town. The wizard was a man by the name of Moraxis. This man was in talk with the society and was going to be providing us with some artifacts, tablets, copies of other tablets from well, ancient Iceland. He is also, well, was also, the uncle of Captain Coulson Modris. Uh, you would immediately recognize the name as Coulson Modris is the primary contact between the Pathfinder Society and the Nation of Anthem. Oh. He has provided me with this note to give to the Pathfinders that are dispatching. You would place it on the table. The society is, generally speaking, a neutral party. We try to avoid involvements in politics, particularly where Chiliax is involved, as we've only recently begun to actually have open lodges in the nation once again. In this case, we are making an exception. Colson Madras has long been an ally of the society. And this man is obviously a threat to the continued safety of the UC. So we're going to go kill him. If you can capture him and bring him to justice, then certainly. I'd rather see him hang from a yard arm. But, you are fully authorized. There is a bounty on this man's head. There will be other people most likely interested in finding him. After he made his most recent attack, a fortnight ago on the small Enderin village of Whittleshine, 
the burning sent city to the ground with few survivors. He was attacked by Andrew's navy. His ship was badly damaged, but he managed to escape. He is not welcome in Chiliacus. He is not welcome then. Which means that the Isle of Portos here is the only safety he could find. He would not risk coming to Absalom. Diamel makes a much more convenient location. If none of you have been to the city before, then good for you. I'm sorry that I have to send you there. What can you tell us about it? Diabelle stands on the flooded ruins of a former siege town on the western coast of the Aura Isle. It's a few days' travel. It shouldn't take you long. In the inner harbor is fortified by a gigantic maze of derelict war barges that have been sunk to make it impossible for large ships to even enter into its harbor. Ships that go there to trade must offload onto smaller ships to be brought into the harbor itself. The entirety of the place is a fortified from the outside. It is run and operated under the banner of Absalom, but is oftentimes referred to simply as the back door to an Absalom, if you will. It is a place filled with smugglers, very proud smugglers of their heritage as well as their city. It is a dangerous place, although you would be less likely to be knifed in the back so much as run into one of the assorted forces controlling the city, primary amongst them the Quartos Consortium. You should avoid angering them if at all possible. The, cordi- the Consortium is a semi-covert, I will use the term privacy, although they portray themselves as being a merchant hybrid. They specialize in running contraband, but are skilled and capable enough to make certain that they have not been caught in the process. As long as you're not interfering with business as usual for them, I wouldn't be overly concerned. Although I would not be surprised if Dumore was involved with the consortium directly. I'll ask you to make your way overland and you'll gather more information once you arrive there. We already have a member of the society in the city, a man that goes by the name of Osprey, a druid of some renown. He has called the city home for many years. He can be located in a pub known as the Tells. You can find it in South Reach. If you follow the road along, you'll make your way through Parkman Gate. It's just a little bit south. If I may make a suggestion. Keep your way for our mm. We don't know, need the Pathfinder's involvement in this publicized. Mm. Very well. Well, and we're doing political, well, semi political maneuvers. Osprey will be able to provide you with more information when you arrive. I have already sent a message ahead informing him of all of your descriptions. Although, considering his Keen eye, he will probably recognize you for what you are upon arrival. Mm. The tails will be a safe place for you once you get there. If you do not have mounts, I will provide them to help you in your overnight ride. This is a matter of utmost importance. Keep yourself safe, Pathfinders. Uh, with the horses provided, um, you can actually make your way overland rather quickly, arriving at your destination in three days. Cool. Nice. Okay. Um, fortunately, you wouldn't have to deal with any of the assorted usual problems uh, since you're making your way quickly along, uh, such as the numerous and dead that haunt this island, uh, primarily because of the numerous wars that have taken place on this island, uh, as well as the centaur tribes, but they're primarily in the north. Uh, upon writing out, you could take the time to read over the uh, letter provided to all of you. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, It would be addressed to uh, my fellow free citizens. Uh, it would read, Forgive the terseness of this communique. I have no heart for cordiality in this bleak morning. These latest atrocities, atrocities committed by the tyrants of Chiliacs have claimed not only dozens of our innocent citizens, but also my uncle, the aged sage, sage Maraxis. 
I long to leap shipboard and deal with this personally, but my duty demands that I stay here in Absalom, no matter how Asmodeus bids me to smite his servants. Killing Dumas, Dumore goes without saying. I ask only that you pay him back with interest for his heinous acts of piracy, to spill his blood as he did the innocent men, women, and children at Wittleshine. I trust that you will take good care, and in doing so, receive the, great, the gratefulness of this thankful night. Guard yourselves well and die well, my friends, and return safely above all else. I wish that I could stand by your side. Sincerely, Captain Colson Maurice. It's your kind of mission. Murder. Well, now, he appears to want to do this, but... Well, murder with a purpose. But you would make your way overland over the course of days to arrive in the city of Diabell. The town is set upon a cliff overlooking the ocean beyond with a natural harbor that has been well, rather well fortified by numerous ships that have been sunk, as well as what appear to be, well, basically what look to be a haphazard jetties constructed from rubble and iron of ancient fortifications, basically making it so only a smaller vessel could actually fit through the maze, so warships and large merchant galleys must anchor further out to sea, of which you can see numerous them, numerous uh, ships sitting beyond the harbor, you guys waiting for their resupplies to come back in. The northern portion of the city is completely up on the cliff face. Uh, the southern portion of the city drops down to close to about level uh, with the ocean, with numerous uh, docks protruding out from here. Although, from what you can see, even those are still up on a cliff face and probably good 20 or 30 feet high, meaning that you either have to walk down to the docks or they may have lower docks uh, down at the dock level. Any of those of you who have knowledge local? Nope. nope. Mm -mm. Oh, yeah, we all know awesome. nothing. <laughs> that's right. we're, wow. we're the party of not knowing things. <laughs> but you'd arrive in Dia Bellevue the overland route from Absalom, making your way in through the Harpies Gate, which is one of the two gates that leads into the city. You'd arrive to find the town is an interesting collection. The town itself is rather large. You guess that it probably boasts a fairly large population, maybe some 5,000 souls, although, of course, that is diminutive in comparison to the metropolis that is Absalom. The buildings here have simple stone foundations and wooden upper reaches, and the eaves on most of these are painted in brilliant colors to give this a rather lively place. Strangely, um, a common reoccurrence here, which you can guess either is because it's a fishing town or some sort of local custom, are large fishing nets which are strung across one side of each one of the uh, buildings. These are covered with what appear to be numerous decorations, ranging from wooden carbon, carved fish to baits and lures, sometimes to even things like figureheads of ships or oars from boats. What all this means, you have very little idea. But regardless, it makes the entirety of this place look from the outside to be a rather quaint and, you're going to say, welcoming fishing community. This is despite the fact that the guards would eye everyone rather suspiciously as they would make their way in. Um, Many of them bearing a signet, which you're going to guess represents them as members of either the town guard here or this consortium that you've heard of. You're not entirely positive. You're also not positive if there's any difference between the town guard and the consortium in the city. Making your way into the city, you can make your way south, down towards, you're going to guess, the south reach portion of the town. It's difficult to tell. Uh... Potentially stopping one of the locals, many of them are rather uh, kind, if not somewhat terse. They could direct you to a local pub known as the Tells. Finding your way here, you would be... For most of you, this is your first time approaching something that you're going to guess is kind of like a lodge, outside of the Grand Lodge in Absalom. Uh, if that's the case, then this is about as far from the Grand Lodge of Absalom as an outhouse is from a palace. <laughs> Uh, the dingy brine soaked shack is covered with swordfish tails um, across the outside of it, where you can see numerous longshore men coming in uh, and off of the, you're going to guess, graveyard shifts, judging by how tired they look and how early the morning is right now, um, piling into, well, said tavern, as well as numerous people that you're going to guess were there from the evening before, passed out in piles or in uh, pools of their own vomit in the street outside. Well, this is. Charming. 
classic. Not exactly the word I would have chosen. On the plus side, though, this disparaging scene has seems to have very few prying eyes, as most of the people are more involved in their own cups than anything else as you begin to approach. Okay. Making your way inside, as I assume all of you do. Confer, buddy. Uh, you find a small crowd of uh, older men, uh, at this point already in the morning, drunk and rowdy. Um, the revelry within barely contained by the boarded up windows, as there appears to be no glass left in this place um, that covers the outside of the building. Lovely. Making your way inside, you'd find the entirety of this place is a rather dingy affair that honestly makes the outside look rather clean. Um, I'm scared to touch anything. I'm just scared to drink anything. <laughs> you would all stand out here horribly as sore thumbs amongst the assorted burned-faced um, sailors that have been down at the, uh, or sailors and dock workers who have been applying this trade for years. I'm going to step back and behind Leaf. <laughs> I have a somewhat pleasant tan. These <laughs> numerous scars. Um, as you make your way in and glance around, you get a number of jeers from the assorted locals. Um, primarily terms like upscalers and gold thumbers. Probably due to the fact that any of you have ever held gold pieces, which many of these people probably have never. That's not my fault. One man would begin getting up to his feet, staring towards all of you, and beginning a drunken gait in your direction, before another figure at the far end of the bar would scrape up to stand up and stare across the way. The man would glance down, and the majority of the crowd would quiet, beginning to turn back to their drinks and stare sullenly, as the man across the uh, bar would wave a hand for you to approach. Interesting. Somebody sense the motive. Um, I'm going to sense the motive I'm drunk, or <laughs> say if he is actually drunk, or is he trying to make play as... Eleven. Nine. Uh, you both get the feeling that he's probably legitimately drunk. Um, whether or not he was planning on trying to mug you right here, you're not entirely positive. Although drunk it. people have done stupider things. True. Uh, regardless, the entirety of the crowd in here seems to give a wide berth of either respect or fear. It's difficult to tell which one to the man on the far side of the room. That's probably our guy. Well, let's go talk to him. The figure in question is dark. Um both in a hair color as well as his dark cloak, which is wrapped back around him with his hood pulled low. His flesh, though, is relatively tan, showing a man that's probably been outside in the sun for a majority of his life. He would sit back down, dropping his feather-cloaked uh, hood back and glancing over all of you. Uh, the man, when he was standing, is close to about six feet in height. Uh, his hair is black and falls uh, rather long down his back. His eyes are a piercing, almost dark shade of brown to the point of being black themselves, and give him, again, you're going to guess with the name uh, here, an almost bird-like appearance. He would stare at all of you intently, motioning a hand towards the other chairs. He's already set up four of them, uh, one of them with a step stool. Hey! How considerate. I assume you're Osprey? You assume correctly. He would make the sign of the open road with one hand, somewhat hidden by his cloak, just to confirm with all of you that he is a pathfinder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Osprey would not. Well, welcome to the city of Dumbo. It's lovely. It has its charm. For those of us who have lived here for a very long time, it can be a community of kind individuals. But they're not particularly fond of outsiders. Regardless, I'm certain the tourism is not why you've come here today. We're uncertain exactly where the Hydra's fame is going to be headed. Either here or one of the other local ports. But we are in luck. It's here. His ship arrived three days ago. Hmm. Many of his crew members have come ashore. He himself possibly is one. I am to provide you with as much information as I can, and I have gathered a great deal, both myself and... Prince. He has anchored his much sought after ship in our harbor, although his vessel is too large to come inside of the bay itself. Everyone is looking. He carries with him some ancient tablets of extreme historical value to our organization. I'm certain that you've been informed. Mm -hmm. Unknown to most, Little Shine, well, the town that he raised. 
was the home of Maraxis Three Shadows. I'm certain that you've heard of his death and the theft of his. The Pathfinder Society did pace, place several bids on the items in question. We were to receive them. No one was going to outbid us for this. We have decided that we will continue with our arrangement with him. We will take possession of the items and we will provide the money to his family. Perhaps it may even be enough to pay for a priest to rectify these wrongs. Regardless, though, we must race to get Demore and recover the stolen tablets before his pursuers find him. Someone else kills him and then takes what's there. Or worse, he flees ports and makes his way elsewhere to the shackles or some other pirate kingdom beyond our reach. Not to say that we don't have reach in the shackles. If our sources are correct, we've learned that he owes a substantial amount of money to one of the consortium, the Cortos Consortiums. More ambitious. They use the term enforcer. An importer by the name of Lover Stratzkel. Likely he'll need to settle with him at some point. Lover's shop is on Melden Lane, near the docks. You may be able to pick up Demore's trail from there. And then do whatever it takes to get those tablets back. What exactly is on the the tablets are old, from what I understand. They are not, in fact, original Aslanti relics. But from what I understand, they are old copies of Aslanti relics or texts, supposedly of ancient Aslanti descent. Regardless, though, these priceless treasures could provide us a rare insight, both into the Aslanti tongue and language, as well as possibly the civilization itself. They have no magical power. They are not artifacts of that sort, but they have great historical value. Our society would like to secure them and see if perhaps we can garner some information from them to
Fact, or, uh, first thing we need to do is cut off his escape. Because if we can do that, then we're more likely to be able to... How are we cutting off his escape if we're not burning his ship and we're not killing his crew? I didn't say we were... I didn't um, say we weren't killing his crew. Well, I don't really want to kill his crew, but... Uh, I just... We can still cut off his escape without burning a perfectly good ship. The exact position of the ship is not known to me at the moment. We don't have a way to get out to the ship. Yes, you so... You will need a vessel to navigate the maze. Let's find him here. How about we start with his long shark? Mm-hmm. Flubber? Flubber. Flubber. Yes. <laughs> you just wanted to say Flubber. <laughs> his land lover. <laughs> You can find them on Meldon Lane. Very well. And it's just down the road from here, down near the docks. Thank you. You may be able to find contacts in the underdocks as well. The underdocks? The entirety of Diabelle is built atop a cliff. The cliff is actually a large overhang. There are numerous tunnels that lead down into the cave systems and supports that support up the town, as well as a second level of docks underneath the primary docks, just above sea level. It just sounds confusing. It is a an area free from prying eyes where people don't ask questions about cargo being moved. Mm, sure. More likely than not, if he is operating, he is operating down there. Alright, well let's start with the Lone Shark and then if we need to we can mm. head into the tunnels, I suppose. Yeah. Why do I feel like we're going to end up there either way? We're just lucky like that. Aren't we, though? Yeah. Very well. May the gods speed you in this task. Thank you for your help. Of course. And you can find me here if you need me. And we do have a small safe room in the back. The sheets are mostly clean. Mostly. Mm-hmm. I don't like that you added mostly. I wouldn't sleep there, but it's free. <laughs> Let's try to have this done before we need to sleep. That's my plan. Well, we'll have to sleep somewhere, but we can figure that out later. Okay. To the lone shark it is. Lubber? Mm-hmm. Yep. That is a bell. Lubber the lone shark. Lubber Stutzkin. Lubber is his first name? Who names their kid Lubber? The guy <laughs> is his really... actual name. Yeah. <laughs> he might just be called Lubber. Like... In it's the lover. book, is it like in quotation marks? Yeah, it's, it's lover. Like land lover, I'm telling you. He it's, doesn't it's mean... spelled different. It is spelled L uh, U B O R. Lubor. Lubor. Might That's be weird. Lubor or. I like lover. Lover, <laughs> <laughs> lover it is! <laughs> I will summon Sariel now that we might be getting into mischief. Uh, I will point out that you will be drawing a lot of attention to yourself walking around. Please don't do this. But it takes like a full round for him to get here. If we get in trouble, I'm useless. We're not expecting to be attacked by the loan shark, because the loan shark's probably going to be siding with us because he wants us to go eat to the guy. Yeah, but we're in a town full of No, he probably wants us to go eat to the guy's knees, so pay his loans. That's fine, as long as we know where the guy is, and for his knees. We should find out how much the guy actually uh, needs from him, like how much he owes. All the money. Probably more than we had on us. All right, fine. We're going to pay off this guy's loan shark. I'm not paying off the loan shark. I'm saying we could take the guy's... We probably don't have enough money to pay off the loan shark. Anyway. All right, let's go see Lover. Keep your dog secret. Aw. For now. He's going to bring them out. Sick him on people later. In fact, you might be able to sick him on this pirate dude. But you would make your way out into the city streets, uh, following along, making your way steadily further to the south. The markets here and the people running them are rather demanding uh, as far as yelling at all of you uh, in much the way the fishmonger would, uh, trying to sell off everything from beaver pelts to pearls, uh, as well as mother pearl jewelry, um, and of course, fish. I imagine you'd ignore a majority of these making your way down towards the docks proper. Mm-hmm. Unlike the buildings built uh, further away that you're going to guess are primarily residences, these buildings don't have the same, well, decorations across the side of them, the same fishnet and design, which again, you're going to guess is some sort of local custom. Uh, instead, most of the buildings here are rather simply built, and you're going to say practical. 
Uh, all of them have signs across their doors that you're going to guess the node and sort of number of different shipping or merchantile businesses, so on and so forth. Uh, there's even a dock further along the line from where you're standing, which actually flies the flag of Chiliax. Which you're not entirely positive what's going on there. We're not going Although there. Although it might be, yeah. Uh, again, then again, the guy was disowned by his own nation, so he's probably not anywhere near there. They might be here hunting him, though. That's, That's a very good point. He did say that there was a bounty on him. Uh, you find it interesting that a majority of these businesses uh, seem to be basically built straight down into the docks, and there doesn't actually appear to be any sort of maybe wharf master or dock master here, so you're not positive how they collect tariffs. Um, unless the dock masters just make sure some things just fall off the boat. You're not quite positive. Or they're out, like beyond the little maze thing, collecting all the tariffs and stuff there. It's quite possible. Uh... You would follow the road down uh, before finding the building in question, a sign hanging on the side of the road, which would lead you to a path that would actually circle around, uh, as effectively the road runs behind the buildings and all the buildings are faced towards the dock. Uh, you would circle around noting that all the windows, uh, at the very least on the back side of this building, seem to have been shuttered. Uh, you're going to say that the curtain's drawn inside. Hmm. Well, secret dealings and whatnot. Circling around to the front of it, you would find a sign over the door reading, Lovers Imports. Uh, the door itself sling, hangs slightly ajar. Uh oh. It's open. Uh, well, who leaves the door ajar? There's no light coming from within. Oh, that's weird. Now, can I send the fire off? No. Let's check first. <laughs> Her deck's out. Check inside. Her deck's out. Open the door. Well, we have a light source, right? There is light. Yeah. Oh, we can't show them. Light. Yeah, I was like, we're not using our wayfinders. Somebody makes me give me light. I have the light spell. All right, you light something. I guess we'll be like, hello. And then we'll be like, open the door and be like, after your accent shoving open the door, um, you'd be immediately be hit with the coppery scent of blood, oh, okay. um, which fills this room as well as the well, smell. Nice. Of, you're going to say opal, probably. Um, this should be able to track down to two bodies which lay off towards the side, one of which his head has been slightly split, the other one has been disemboweled um, by what you're going to guess was a vicious slash. One of them our guy? Uh, the room itself seems to be a simple, you're going to guess, reception area. Uh, a large table cuts this room basically in half. These two people sit off towards the side, uh, slumped up against the wall where they were killed, next to a door uh, that sits between the two of them. Uh, furniture lies smashed and strewn about. Um, the entirety of this place is eerily silent. Um, do, do we know what Lover looks like? You no. were not provided with a description. Mm -hmm. Huh, well that's useful. Well, this, does this town even have like a city guard or is it all just... The consortium basically. Yeah. Oh, so the mafia is the... Okay. Yeah. Um, is there the any town? booklets or anything nearby like we could check? Yeah, I suppose we can uh, search a, the place. Yeah, there's a um, ledger on the table. I would like to go take a look at that. Is there anything stolen looking? Like uh, stolen open, looking? They're like broken cases. I don't know. Not immediately. Mm. It could be beyond this door. It's true. Anyway, ledger, I guess. Um, stepping into the, the room, and I'd be, I suppose, looking around, turning around the ledger. Um, I suppose grabbing it with just two fingers since blood from the arterial spray is across the entirety of this um, desk. I'm just, I'm going to open it with my sickle. I'm not touching it. <laughs> Everything in this city is disgusting. Here, I'll open it for you. <laughs> my sickle's fine. Remember, I'm tiny. Like. <laughs> uh, the ledger shows uh, numerous accounts uh, back and forth, which are going to guess are payments um, and what seem to be basically accounts from, you're going to guess this man was a customs inspector. Uh, if you have a linguistics check, or wish to make a linguistics check, you may. Mm -mm. Nope. Very well. <laughs> Does anybody have it? It looks skill? legit. <laughs> I have it as a skill, but I can't. I, I'm already trying to figure out what I'm not going to take to put stuff in knowledge local. <laughs> I don't have any it looks legit, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this guy well, was totally search, adding up and up. Let's search through his crap and see. Uh, only mimic perception roll. Sure. I oh. see nothing. I don't even see the ledger. That's how much nothing I see. 21. 2. 5. Uh -huh. 16. 
you roll a one too? You roll a one and uh, have a one? Yes. yes. I have a one. I don't need wisdom. You guys have never ransacked a place, have you? <laughs> I've never found the need to ransack a place. I'm a professional ransacker. I that. touch people and they heal. Uh, I suppose you're the... the one that's good at looking for things. <laughs> Do you have him roll? <laughs> He's not He's here! Not here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Now you might want to I suppose that you would be busy uh, digging through the ledger. Um, you would be distracted by how much apparently you want your summon to be here. <laughs> the two of you would both hear a sobbing sound. Um, judging by the sound of it, maybe from a woman or a child, it's difficult to tell exactly, coming from behind the door um, off towards the side. Bursting um, through the door. No, don't scare them. We're not here to hurt you. Please come out. Who are you talking about? There's a crying person. Crying person? Probably yeah. smaller. Woman. Uh, the crying would just continue. Uh, as Open the door. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go over and like knock quietly. Uh, knocking you, does the door crack slightly up, open under the you know impact of your knuckles. You can hear the sobbing uh, more clearly, uh, as well as what sounds to be someone muttering the word father. Oh, that's sad. Don't comfort them. They're cute. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna call hello into the room. There is a response. I'm gonna just, uh, I guess, head into the room. I have, yeah, I have a good I'll, diplomacy check. I'll head into the room as well. Well, uh, pushing open the door, um, there actually is a lantern in this room, uh, as well as the fireplace off to the side, which is uh, currently lit and seem to have been in the process of being used to, you're going to guess, make tea, judging by the pot. <coughs> Um, a older man, you're going to guess, a middle-aged merchant, judging by his appearance, lay splayed over a table in the center of the room, uh, a dagger still embedded in his back, uh, where he fell. Uh, a woman is in the process of cradling him and would glance, um, scaredly back over towards the rest of you as you would open the door. You guess the girl's probably no more than maybe her early twenties. Um... Both of you may make sense about it. Oh my gosh. Eight! Three! <laughs> she seems hopelessly distraught as you <laughs> hold the man. I'm gonna put my sickle away, hold my hands up, and kind of a I'm not gonna hurt you manner. Did you curse me with your dice look? Is that what's happened? <laughs> I'm switching my dice. That's weird. So the two of you are entering the room? Yes. Yeah. And you two are? We're just, I'm covering the exit, I guess. I'm going to follow them in because I spawned her. Uh, you may make yourself a motion. Ten. 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 Can I make a perception roll? Uh, no. You haven't actually had a chance to step in the room. You would step forward. Um, the woman would glance over towards you. And who are you? Are you with the guard? No, uh, I'm Eliza. I was looking for a man named Lover. Which I don't think I'm gonna find. <laughs> Eliza! <laughs> so you're not with the guard? Uh -oh. No, we're not. She would stop sobbing. Good. She would raise up a hand, beginning to trace through arcane sigils as two men would step out of the shadows from either side. Oh, no. I knew it! Don't summon Saria! <laughs> I knew! I know! Because you play everywhere and it's like, you don't want to summon the thing. <laughs> well. I will need the party to roll initiative. That's okay. You have your access. That's okay if we're sending I... me in there because I'm cute. <laughs> Table. You don't assume that the sobbing thing is just a sobbing child until you've uh, assessed the threat. Well, I assume somebody would sense motive and actually sense it. Instead you sense the like, people that are charisma-based <laughs> casters in the room. I don't room. even have a rank in it yet. I don't either. I have a zero. first level. I have a zero. I definitely rolled a lot better. I have a one. This you is good me. for me. I chose the It's bad for me. I'm going to catch up on my kill count. Oh, please. shut up. <laughs> we'll see. All right. I am useless. Leaf. <laughs> 18. Leaf is rolling on an 8. Mm -hmm. oh. Eva. Oh. 4. Four. Eliza. 22. 
22. Nice. Brent. 22, but Eliza is going to beat me on that. So. Uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and give uh, the rest of the party a perception roll to hear those uh, two guys me? moving. Yeah, in position. You missed it, but... Oh, hey, now I roll the perfect 20. Uh, 14. 10. Uh, 21. Uh, actually, you were the only one that makes the perception <laughs> check to notice them. <laughs> So you would basically begin moving forward before you'd see the shadows moving out from either side of her. um, Just as they get ready. You will act in the surprise attack round. Uh, The crying woman gets first initiative. She will leap up onto the table. Can she theoretically Uh, She will chant a tone for anyone who has spellcraft. I do. 18. Nine. Uh, with a 9, you have no idea. With an 18, burning hands. Oh, oh, oh that's um, This is better. These flames will leap out. Uh, burning hands, burning hands. She's gonna burn me and not even the room. <laughs> uh, technically, yes, it will catch I out there. Uh, you do have cover, which will grant you plus one bonus for your reflex save. I will need reflex saves from the party. She's gonna die. This one. This one's gonna die. Alright. Six. 19. 15. 18. Uh, so the one that gets the bonus does not save, everyone else does. Yay! Uh, the party takes three points of damage. Um, sorry, so you each take one point of damage because you save for half, uh, you take three points. Okay for me. Uh, the ledger on the uh, table behind all of you would burst into flames, and the flames would lift past all of you. I imagine beating out the fire real quick. Uh, as we go to Eva. Um, can I reach around the doorway and flail? <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. You get a single time. Okay, even though I, it's even though my claws are times two, I still only get to swipe with one. Uh, it's worth it. Yeah. Uh, nine. Uh, nine. You would not shrink your target even flat if you're in the corner. Well, this is why. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just move. <laughs> both of the Demarius thugs would lash out with their weapons, striking down at the flanked Wait, do- the guy's a girl? This is a girl, these are guys. Yeah. Oh, it's just all of the other kids though. So. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't really think like a Oh, man, yeah, yeah, he's actually a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, you are flat footed, uh, so a 12. Yeah. Uh, and a 21. Yeah. I was pretty sure. Uh, blade would strike down at you for four points of damage as it clips you across the shoulder. Half dead, guys! That's okay, whatever. Uh, that would bring us to round one of combat, Eliza. First initiative. Get out of there. Get out of there. So where am I supposed to go? Under the table. Under the table! <laughs> uh, you would technically, it would not be large enough to accommodate to see if you would have to, like, stuff. Uh, and also can move one to five people. Well, how tall? But, wait, so the table is tall enough I can step under it? It's tall enough that you can squeeze under it, yes. So you duck under it, you take the squeezing penalties, because um, you would be crouched down under the table. Uh, you can potentially delay and hope that he gets out of your way, so you can pipe and step back out of the room. But... Mm. I go directly after him. Well, I need to get in there. You could attempt an acrobatics check to try to tumble out of the room. Yeah, I don't have that great of an acrobatics, but I'll try that. Very well. I can get my butt out. Seven. Seven. Very well. You would provoke three attacks of opportunity. Uh, actually, sorry, two, because uh, she hasn't thrown a weapon yet. They would both swing down. Natural one's automatically going to miss. Uh, the other one is a 15. Am I considered flat-footed? Then no! There you go. You would dive out of the way as they would swing, chopping down towards the tiny halfling. Alright, get me the hell out of there. Because you're technically the same square as this person. She can no, she's going, she's going back. Oh, you're going back. I'm she's running out away. of here. Oh, you're I, being. I don't even have my sickle out because I put it away because I was supposed to be the cute diplomatic one. You still have a standard action remaining. I'm well, going to draw my sickle. <laughs> also, I think we're doing the first square. Uh, I've sworn like three times oh, today already, so I think it's The first one is probably going to make it in the edit. Yeah. Uh, draw your signal. Draw my signal. Very well. Draw your weapon. Bring us to Bren. I'm going to draw my 
So she gets she gets hopefully stabbed in the face. Um, so I'm fine. Roll four. I'm gonna roll real bad though, and I get seven. A seven will up strike your target. Uh, Lancing off some sort of magical protective field around her. Oh, shit. Just Leaf. Very protecting. Um, I'm gonna delay till after, um, here it goes, because you need to have a wait. Leaf delays. Uh, that will bring us, uh, back to the woman. She will hop down off the table. Uh, uh, I don't have that. Versus. She will hop down We're off the table. We're first level. I'm stepping. <laughs> Step up and she, she will... You look like you're some sort of spellcaster, so you're probably going to uh, She'll chant the tone again, allowing another spellcraft for anyone that wishes to take it. Yeah, she's going to go through two people, isn't she? Uh... Fourteen. Seven. Fourteen. Uh, now that you'd be able to identify this, she would finish pointing her finger as a purple shard would burst, swerving around the two intervening targets, uh, slamming into the oracle for four points of damage. I am staggered, because I'm at zero. zero. Yay. You would stumble backwards, spitting up blood. Eva. I am going to use my nifty summoner summony thing and as a standard action summon a dog. Very well. Um, beside the chick. Very well. Uh, you are currently being threatened. <sighs> you wish to cast the defense? I guess. Same type of stuff. There you use that. I have to, it has to be in line of sight for me to summon the dog. You can see it around that corner too. That's yeah. Okay, okay, then I'll take a five foot step over. Yeah, you have full cover from the other guy at that point, so. I can cast this spell as a standard action, and the creatures remain for one minute per level. Yeah, okay, summon a dog. Oh. So, does this still have to wait till my next turn to act, even though the summon is shorter, or summoning time is shorter? Uh, since it is not a full round action, it would appear that it gets to attack. Puppy. Uh, oh, 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 there you go. One for So she has to have one for So the dog would appear. Sixteen. Uh, spite out hitting the wizard. Park, park. God, where is. Okay. What? Okay, no, wait. That would have been an 18. 18 He's... still hits. These are confusing to read. This is why I'm not a DM. Five. <laughs> you know? Biting for five points of damage. The wizard still stands. Hey, you should. I did a thing. Uh, <laughs> Leaf, do you wish to re-enter yes, the initiative? Yes, I do. Leaf ends his delay, re-enter the initiative. Take a five foot step into there. I'm gonna attack this guy. Well, I'm gonna take the partial cover bonus, sir. Hey, yeah. I'll do. Um, our attacking is 21. A 21, you would strike your target, making up for last week's performance. <laughs> um, especially when I deal uh, 15 points of damage. You would splatter the man across the room, ramming your axe into the door jam before wrenching it free. That's the one sound of That's the man I married. <laughs> <laughs> well, the entire reason for marrying me is how much I'm, how much murder I commit. Can you let me commit murder? <laughs> <laughs> the family that murders together. Family that slays together stays together. <laughs> the Adams family. <laughs> uh, the other thug. <laughs> we named the dog there now, that's surprising. <laughs> also, there's a giant barbarian murderer. Murderer. Uh, he'll hold the ground there and he'll actually swing at the, uh, the smaller one in front of him. Is it? Aren't you still like. I must say. Well, smaller comparison to this dude. <laughs> uh, still, though, I don't believe a 13 will hit. Very well. Eliza. You are staggered. I'm gonna boot myself with healing. Very well. Call upon your divine powers. Okay. Eight. Okay, that's my turn. Very well. Brent. How are we going to take it? Hmm? Is that going to take Yeah, it's uh, uh, only uh, two and a half feet high, so we can actually step up. How are you going to take it? Cool. Let's climb right up off the like table. I'm gonna stab her. Do I get a bonus? I don't know. I'm gonna stab her with my power attack. 
Twelve. Twelve will still be deflected by her magic. Moves. You curse everyone. As long as I do well, it's okay. <laughs> He's trying to catch up. Oh my gosh. Uh, she will uh, take a five foot step to the side, uh, drawing her dagger. She steps into the flank. Stabbing at your profaning self. <laughs> uh, 17. No. Very well. You deflect it wide with your shield. You see profanity down at her. Eva. Um. I'm gonna. Eva will wave her imaginary pom poms <laughs> and the dog will attack. Very well. The dog does go behind you in the shift, so. Wait, what's our. It's the same turn. I'm not going to do anything because I'm not going to get in the Leaf's way and there's no other way for me to get in the room and everybody's in melee combat. Very well. Raw, raw, raw. Yeah. That. So goes shish goodbye. Yeah. And... Uh, the dog technically continue following with the shoulder, so I suppose go after the Yes. Cool. So he'll take a five foot doggy, steppy, jumpy yeah. thing. Sixteen to hit again. A sixteen will strike the wizard. We'll lose this skill. <laughs> Razzy dog. does four points of damage. <laughs> the wizard still stands. He's killing his dog. Leaf. Alright. Let's see if I can double up here. Five foot step into the room. Five foot step. Bird time. Very well. Continuing the power attack. Indeed. Yes. And swing. Um, 24. 24 will Is that not a threat? Down. No, it's a, oh. it's a great action. Uh, dealing. Uh, 13 points of damage. You would splatter your second opponent. Yes! My triumphant return. <laughs> Bathing yourself in the blood of your enemies. Life. <laughs> that's <laughs> creepy. <It's laughs> Later. Hey, that, that's, that's leaning more toward chaotic or evil. Not I am chaotic. <laughs> Life. Um, no, no, no. At least not. the delays, I can't really do anything. They seem to be chopping these guys down pretty well. Delays, delays, Brent. Can I? This moment. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, I'm actually gonna do it this no. time, thankfully, with a 23. 23 yes. would solidly drop your long sword down at your bow. Um, that'll be 11 points of damage. You would chop her head clear off. Yeah. The dog will dismiss the dog. The dog will disappear. Get your real dog. <laughs> so how many people need to row the boat? Uh, it can't be rowed by just one person. Two people can row it if you want to go faster. I'll row it too. Um, we'll row it together. Like Viking along the shore, and I'm sure you'll do fine. Yes, yeah, so we're both equally strong. We can row together. Can we go out My feet probably sure. don't even touch the bottom of the boat. So. <laughs> I... Get a zero because I roll a four and then minus four. Penalties, so I don't you got technically a negative two because it also has a partial exposure. Sure. That's yeah, okay. yes. A zero would not strike it or surprisingly even the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> so it just streams across the water until it just disappears. I like the idea that you just sit there stooping around until it hits something far up. Hold, oh, please. Accident. I just picture Eva taking it and then almost falling over because, you know. Yep. This accident is time for some water combat. Um, Alright, so I need to make some check. He drowned. I'm gonna start drowning. <laughs> I told you so. I got a four. Okay, Leaf. Jordan's here. Hands over his axe, jumps into the water, and then doesn't emerge. 